If you have trouble scaling your business because you're constantly overwhelmed, paper cut, distracted, unable to really focus and access any type of flow states, this video will change the game for you. Because I'm gonna share with you what I call the 10 day, 10X day protocol. We show our clients how to map the day in order to access consistent flow states. I'm gonna give you the full protocol, what happens before, what happens during, what happens after, so you can re-architect your whole routine and train yourself to access flow states. This is going to change the game for you. It's the holy grail of productivity. But contrary to popular belief, it's just not about just stacking flow triggers. You have to prime yourself spiritually, mentally, physically in order to get to this level. This is the last thing that we teach our clients because if you just learn read online, how to access a flow state, but you're not primed up spiritually, mentally, physically, you are not going to get there. You require to, you have to unlock your full potential across all levels in order to be able to access this altered state of consciousness. Because that is a flow state. A flow state is not something you do. It is a state in which you do things, right? So you have to trigger a, uh, this altered state of consciousness, just like dreams, just like trance, just like normal waking consciousness, just different states of consciousness and specifically flow states is one of the most functional one of the best because it makes you feel your best perform your best and become up to 500 percent more productive according to a study that mckinsey the management consultancy firm did a few years ago so in essence this is the holy grail of productivity this is what's going to make you crazy effective in your day-to-day -day. but in order to get there you need to properly map out your day but also prime yourself now, in order to understand exactly what is a flow state, right? So what are we trying to do here? In essence, we're trying to add additional neurochemicals to the normal focus neurochemical. So we have to create the conditions for flow states to emerge. And those conditions are spiritual, mental, and physical in nature. So before we start, how do we create this pre-existing condition? So first of all, there's a mindset play here. You need to believe that you can, because for most people, having a 10X day with 10 hours of flow is just something out of bounds. They cannot even consider to spend five hours focus. How can they even spend double that time, 10X, so 10 hours of flow? It doesn't make sense, right? So first you need to understand you, you can, and you have to believe that you have the ability to get there. You can train yourself to do it. And getting there implies having what I call perfect nutrition and hydration. Right? So you have to be properly hydrated. If hydration levels fall below 2%, there's a 40% decrease in productivity, but also nutrition. You have to have performance enhancing nutrition, which is high in satiety, low in glycemic index. So you don't, so you feel full very fast and you don't overeat. So you don't trigger this, an excessive rest and relaxation uh, response. You also, have to design your day in the right way. We're going to be telling you exactly how to do it. So you don't just w go to do your day and start performing. No, no, you need to have a set structure in order to make it happen. You also need to limit communication. So communication is a huge driver of inefficiency because it, allow, it, it creates something called attention residue in the brain. Every time you tend to an online communication, some sort of message or Slack or email or WhatsApp or whatever, your brain gets overexcited and a part of your processing power, so to speak, gets lingering in that previous task. This is why if you wake up and the first thing you do is scroll through TikTok and YouTube shorts, you're, this is going to wreck your day because you are conditioning your brain for distraction. You're accumulating attention residue right after waking up. So as I say, limit communication and media consumption. Let's minimize screen time, especially small screen time, as much as we possibly uh, can. And also play uh, to your strength. This is very important because you cannot access a flow state this is something that doesn't get discussed enough, on something you don't care about or you don't intrinsically feel motivated to do. You need to be working on your strength, right? If you are very good with numbers, you will never get into flow trying to write a poem and vice versa. And finally, choose the task freely. 
this is important because there's a core concept in flow psychology called autonomy. Autonomy is your ability to self-direct your uh, tasks, that you choose what you are willing to work on, right? So assuming that you believe you can do it, which you can, your nutrition and your hydration are perfectly on point. You design your day exactly as we're going to be doing, uh, telling you right now, you limit communication and media so you don't overload the brain with any meaningless attention residue. You play to your strengths, so you are a poet or you are a good writer, you're writing, you're a good uh, quant, you are programming, and you choose your task freely, so this is not something your boss has told you to do, but you are choosing yourself to do it, then you are ready to have a 10x day. Now, what is the math of 10 hours of flow? The math is very simple. The math is five sessions of two hours. This is massive because the, we have our own cycles during the day called old tradium uh, cycles or, or rhythms, right? So we cannot sustain focus for four hours at a time, three hours at a time. The biological limit seems to be 90 minutes to 120 minutes. Um, for me, it's more on the 120 minute side. So the goal is to access flow states five times per two hours. And in order to do that effectively, we just segment our day based on this. So let's say that we start at, I don't know, 8 a.m and we go to 10. That is session one. Then the next session will happen half an hour after the previous one because we need to rest and record. We're gonna see that in a minute. So let's say it's 10.30 to 12.30. At this point, you can choose to work, uh, to have one more ring session, or you can choose to eat something. Let's assume that you are going to eat something. So the rest is going to take a little bit longer. It's not gonna be half an hour, it's gonna be uh, one hour. So at 1.30 p.m., you're back until 3.30. And this is session three. Then half more, half more hours until 6 p.m. This is session four. And then finally 6.30 to 8.30. Session Five. These are the five sessions in which we're going to be deploying flow states. This is why I say that it's so important to have your nutrition dialed in and make sure no one is communicating with you so you can truly deploy your mental energy into these five tasks. So five sessions, right? So five sessions of two hours, this is where we're going to be deploying flow states. Now, each how you architect each session is absolutely crucial because Things are just not as simple as just showing up, sitting on your desk, and hopefully trigger a flow state. No, of course not. There's an actual specific protocol that you gotta follow, right? And the best protocol is the ring fencing. It's the best because of two reasons. One is because it is the one that works best, and two is because I invented it. <laughs> not kidding. Like a few years ago, I just came I came with this, num this name in finance. I come from finance. When you are ring fencing money in order to do an investment, it's money that just goes into a separate bank account and you don't touch it, right? So you're ring fencing your investments before they happen. This is where I took the, the, the name. Why? Because we're going to be ring fencing the task. The goal is to create a time block right? In which we have the specific characteristics. One, clear objective. We know exactly what we are looking to do. We know what success looks like within this two hour session. Two, we use a timer. Well, this is one flow trigger. Flow trigger called clear goals. Timer, flow trigger two, called high consequences. When we are using a timer and we have, we're working against the clock to complete something, we are tricking our brain into thinking that there's danger if we don't complete it, which triggers um, high consequences, which is another flow trigger. Then at the end of the session, we're gonna be having feedback. We're gonna be analyzing how it happened. 
which is an other flow trigger, which is immediate uh, feedback. Four, we're gonna have one task, only one task, right? One task, one type of tasks, one thing. If you, if you have to write, write. If you have to you know, conduct a meeting, conduct a meeting. If you need to calculate something on a spreadsheet, make sure that you're working with numbers all the time and you're not moving away off the spreadsheet. So one task is absolutely fundamental to limit attention residue. And something to be said here is this task needs to be 4% more difficult, 4% above skill. So it turns out that this is thing, uh, something called the flow channel. Flow channel in essence is skill level and difficulty of the task. We should be performing here. If the task is, if we are very skilled at the task and the difficulty is not too high, we get bored. But if we have no skill or very little skill and the task is very hard, we get anxious. So we must find this channel in which the difficulty of the task pretty much matches our skill level. Not pretty much, and really we have to go 4% beyond. Why 4% beyond? It's called the optimal stretch. Google engineers calculated this 15 years ago. If a task is 4% outside of your current level of your abilities, this is when you have a chance of unlocking, uh, uh, you know, flow state. All right, so clear objective on a task that is 4% above your skill, uh, skill, then we use a timer to trigger urgency and high consequences. We have feedback waiting for us, so at the end of the session, we're gonna be reviewing exactly what got done. We're gonna be unpacking our results, and we're gonna be repeating this five times. So the night before, we prepared exactly what it is that we're gonna be working on. Down to the detail. I use a template that I can share with you, tell me in the comments if you want it, uh, that I use every single day that we give our clients that helps us uh, map out the day in specific room sessions, right? So the night before, you start by mapping out exactly what the day is going to look like. In the previous example, this was 8 to 10 a.m., 10.30 to 12.30, uh, 1.30 p.m. to 3.30, 4 to 6, and 6.30 to 8.30, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, 10 hours of flow. And this gets mapped out the night before. Now, in between, and this is very important, we have rest and recovery protocols. In order to let the brain relax, basically, chill, encode the information, and lower your brain waves. So this, This rest and record protocols are absolutely fundamental because this is really what allows you to perform over the rest of your day. If you do not rest effectively, if you take, if you just grab your phone and start tweeting or worse, you get to TikTok or whatever in between ring fan sessions, you're going to be accumulating, as we said, a lot of attention residue, a lot of cognitive load. So the effective RAM, RAM, you know, um, random access memory, the let's say your cognitive capacity gets diminished over time. So this rest and recovery protocol needs to be aimed at reducing your cognitive load. Um, so cognitive load down, okay? Now, what should you do? Well, it depends on what you prefer, what helps you focus, what helps you relax, what helps you chill best. But in my view, and this is what I do for a living, the best you can do is meditation, 
breath work, hot or cold therapy, depending on uh, what you need. Stretching also is very good. I also do this. Uh, hydration, hydration and nutrition both. Just make sure you don't check TikTok while you are having something for, to eat, right? These are probably the ones that I do the most, the ones that works best, the ones that I can deploy on half an hour, right? So let's say I would meditate here, I would do here, I will eat lunch, here I would have some sort of a stretching routine. In each one, I will be hydrating. So this is how the 10X day is structured. Five sessions of two hours in which you work against the clock on a very clear task that is 4% outside of your current level of your abilities that you have chosen freely so you have a chance at accessing flow states. Now, there's a lot of ways in which this can go wrong. In the middle of the day, when you start working, this can go wrong if you do not rest effectively. If you check your phone uh, in between uh, ring fan sessions, if you uh, um, communicate through your phone and do whatever that spikes up your cognitive load that overexcites your brain so you're not able to deploy increasingly uh, more intense flow states. In fact, something that our clients tell us since really since we're beginning with since we began with this six years ago is that when they do this which seems like a lot of work it seems like you have to expend a lot of energy truly at the end of the day you're way less tired you're able to get more done at the end of the day why would that be because you have an accumulated cognitive residue and attention residue if you do what i say you will get to 6 p.m 7 p.m 8 p.m feeling as if it was noon you will not have accumulated uh, cognitive residue that keeps you uh, it keeps you tired. So this is something to keep in mind to the point that you may have trouble sleeping and some of our clients uh, tell us because they will normally get to their bed with a lot of an energy still to be spent, right? So this is how you design your day, but this can also go wrong in the AM. So what do you do in the AM protocols? So here. AM. So your number one role in the in the morning is to not overexcite yourself. Don't check your phone. Don't don't check phone. Don't do anything that spikes your cortisol. Cortisol is your stress hormone. We all have a natural built-in cortisol spike uh, right after we wake up, just naturally inbuilt, right? So if we do things that spike our cortisol, we are more likely to accumulate attention residue. And what I mean by this is don't rush. If you have a long commute, take your time to get to the car, uh, buffer in the time that you need to get to your work. Don't get overstressed by you being late. Don't miscalculate on your own personal routines and habits. You know, in essence, make sure that you do not rush and you do not unnecessarily create stress. Um, and finally, something is uh, watch light, right? This is, who am I talking about this all the time? If you see the sunlight <clears throat> right after waking up, you are signaling the, the, your brain that the day has started, one of the principles of chronobiology. So you naturally regulate your own cycles, which is very important because we're going to be working with your own cycles. In fact, your energy is going to look like this, right? This is in essence you, right? This is high energy, and then you have a peak and a throw. 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 A peak. So every time you're feeling energetic, you work on a ring concession. When you need to chill, when your na uh, energy naturally gravitates downwards and you need to rest and recover, well, what do you do? You rest and recover, that's it, right? No mystery here. So again, 
Don't check your phone. Don't spike cortisol by rushing and doing things you know you don't need to do and watch uh, sunlight as soon as you can in order to, uh, in order to regulate your own natural biorhythms that also give your, uh, give your brain a chance to get to your first ring fan session without being uh, overstressed. And this is the morning protocols. The goal is to set the stage for an elite day. Now, what happens with your morning routine? This is very important. Do you need a very long morning routine? No, you need the morning routine that works for you that actually keeps you healthy and grounded. Don't listen to those that say that the work just needs doing and just go do work. Because most people are doing work in a very inefficient manner. They're hustling all day, prom proactive, unfocused, and having a solid routine will help you really up your performance. But the routine cannot be a three hour morning routine. I suggest a 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. Mine right now includes meditation, includes breath work, includes um, a mentor programming exercise. And that's it. And if I go to the gym, that will add to the gym, or maybe I go to the gym later in the day, it doesn't matter. That's not part of my routine necessarily. But I always wake up, meditate, self-hypnose, do some breathing exercise to prime myself up, uh, and then just go about my day. That takes about 30 to 45 minutes at most, and it really keeps me grounded and ready to tackle the day. So this is the AM. What about the PM? Because there's a lot of things that can go wrong in the PM too. Once you have arrive to the p.m. time the goal is to get ready for the next day and how you do this is first by understanding that you are a biological entity you need to rest and recover at night so if we can maximize the time you spend in bed sleeping our performance is going to go up Sleep is a high performance state, which is the highest performing because it is when your brain and your body actually have a chance to clean toxins, get rid of residues, encode new information and memories, and overall get ready for the following day. So what I always tell our clients is create a separation between work and home. Literally have some ritual or mantra or something that helps you create a distinct separation between both. This is important because if you take the stress of your work to your home and vice versa, this is going to create friction in both your personal and professional life. So the first thing is to understand that once you're home, you're home, change your, uh, you know, change your mood, maybe even change your clothes. Sometimes I'll talk to our clients to change your clothes when they get home. And this has helped them really get into another mindset. Instead of being a seven figure CEO, eight figure CEO, they get home and they're a father and they they are a loving spouse. So first of all is create a separation. And then second of all is prime the resting window, as I call it, to be as effective as possible. Which means, in essence, having some sort of routine that prepares you for sleep. That routine, in my case, includes also meditation, it includes a shower, it includes also the mentory programming exercise, and sometimes, not always, I would also do the breath work, but a different type of breath work in order to relax. The most important thing is that you have some sort of routine that primes you to get to bed in a fully relaxed state. This routine should include planning the day, uh, the, your next day, but hopefully you did that at the end of the last ring fence session. And a huge thing here is connection, right? We are social beings. A core ingredient of our happiness is how connected we feel. So if you have a spouse, connect with the spouse. If you have kids, take care of your kids, spend time with them. If you don't have no spouse, no kids, call your uh, family, call your friends, meet up with them, do something that helps you get in the, um, you know, nurture and foster a good relationship because that is crucial to really remove techno stress. And the final thing I'm gonna be saying about your physiology here, just this rule of the 85321 rule, which means that eight hours before bed, stop having coffee. This is very important because the half-life of coffee is about eight hours. So five hours before bed, stop consuming alcohol so you do not disrupt your deep sleep cycles. Three hours before bed, stop eating heavily. I personally fast four to five days every single week because of the reason. Try to stop working, which means stop looking at screens two hours before going to bed, right? So this is the eight, five, three, two, 
uh, rule. And this is how you can have 10 hours of flow every single day. There's a lot more that goes into it, of course. You know, by respect to our clients, I cannot share everything with you. If you really want the full protocol, so you can deploy this three to four to even five times every week, sign up for, uh, for Submastered. But in essence, this is the gist of it. You have to nail the, AM, the AM protocols, nail the PM protocols, and nail the actual day. And if you are good at this, once you get good at this, we get, pe we get people good at this within three to four weeks. You, you really, you know, you really get so much more done that you can work in one, you can achieve in one day what other people will normally take a, a week to, to do because you're focusing 10 hours per day. The latest research uh, says that it's about two hours and 31 minutes of focus time for the average knowledge worker. That is dismal. So if you're able to put this every day into your calendar, you're gonna get so much more done. You're really going to run circles around your past self. So if you want the full protocol, you know where to find us, book a call with us, we'll audit exactly what your performance is, what is your focus, productivity, self-belief, and all the performance variables that we normally tackle. Um, how's that looking like? What is your business goals? And how can we create a routine that actually adapts to your business goals so you, yeah, you eventually achieve them? And of course, if you want to go deep into elite performance, you want to see what is a complementary aspect of peak performance that goes with flow states that is absolutely fundamental, check this video here because it's going to give you a more nuanced understanding of the intricacies of training your brain and mind for elite performance. And of course, until next time.